Matthew 11, 28. We are, we are back here again. And then Jesus said, Come unto me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. He says, Come unto me. He didn't say, Come, on, come to my church. He didn't say, Come to my church. He was going to establish a church, wasn't he? Was he not going to establish a church? Yes, he was. And he made Peter leader. And he told them how to operate in that church. But he didn't say, come unto the church. Who did he say to come to? Yes. Me. Come unto me. Not to his apostles. Not to prophets or pastors or teachers or evangelists. He said, come unto me. And we've got to ask ourselves, honestly, who did we come to? Where we came? Mm. Honestly. It's a question, who did you come to now? As you're listening to what I'm saying right now, did you come to Pataio or Imadi? You're on your own. If you did. And then when you first identified with Christian culture, and I'm deliberately about, about, deliberate about things I'm saying, when you first started being known with church people, which is what many people just did, they didn't even give their life to Christ. They just started attending the church and started getting known with church folks, and then they just learned Christianese. They talk, they talk, act, they act. And I'm not saying it to spy anybody. I'm, I'm, but I, I, I am trying to bring you back to an awareness. Because no matter how far you have gone, you have the chance to reappraise yourself and do the right thing. Praise the Lord and do the needful. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not that they now, they now open the website and say, Hey, you, you have been here, have been, you're not forming, you have been here, but you're not here. Don't worry. We'll disgrace you. Everybody will know that you're not being here. No. If you decide now to come to Christ, you start the journey there. And your faking it stops. So, here and now, or when we first identified with Christianity, who did you come to? You have to answer that question. Who did you come to? Were you drawn to a fine, well-dressed minister? Or were you drawn to an AC tight auditorium? And better sound and lights? Or were you drawn to an uptown church? Or were you drawn to a welfare program? Who did you come to? Because if you don't answer that question, if you don't answer that question, there is no rest for you. Because Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. No preacher can give you rest. No system, no matter how well organized it is, can give you rest. And you see, there are many, unfortunately, who position themselves as the faces of Christ who are blocking people from seeing Christ. Sadly, there are a lot of them who are claiming to be the face of Christ. And people never see Christ, eventually, they only see them. And judgment awaits them in Jesus' name. Amen. Because they are doing great damage to people's lives. Not me, I'm not the one judging them, oh, praise God. It's not me that will judge them. Oh. It's not me. Oh. And when, when we now say that uh, leave them to their God, I'm not leaving them to their God. I'm saying this so that they can know and they can hear and they can repent and change their ways. Praise the Lord. Salvation, eternal life, the Holy Spirit, rest, all these things come from who? From Christ, not from people or from church systems. 
So you're going to know who you came to. You have to answer that question. And I'm calling out to you today. I am calling out to you, wherever you are, listening to me today. Are you tired and weary of religion? You know, are you tired and weary of an empty routine? Some of you had it easier when you were an unbeliever. Now you feel like when you enter into this believing thing, you feel more tired than you were when you were in the world. In the world, you had no cares. You had no cares. You had no concerns. Nobody was, nothing was bugging you. But now that you're supposed to enter into rest, you now realize that you are weighed down with worry, anxiety, concerns all around church life. Jesus says what? Come unto me. So I'm calling out to you today. Who is tired? Who is worked up? Who is abused and used? The problem is not with Christ. The problem is with where you, where you were drawn to. Or, or, or who you were drawn to. Or what you were drawn to. Some of you were drawn to the welfare program. And you soon realize that the rest does not come from money. If rest came from money, then those who have a lot of money in this world will have all the rest. But they have no rest. Rest is far from them. Praise the Lord. They can brag on social media and say, yeah, if, you, if you don't have that money we have, forget it. But they know that the rest is far from them. Do you feel emptier now than when you first believed? Some of you do. I felt it too, so I know. I felt it too at some point in my life. The joy, the excitement. When I first landed in church and met godly people and when I began my journey into the world and I asked myself am I better? No, I'm not. I know I wasn't. And thank God the Lord found me again. Like he's found, finding you again now, tonight. He promises rest. And you won't find it in anyone or anything or anywhere. Other than him, I can promise you in Jesus' name. Don't say amen. No. It's not a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. The fact is, when you read this text, this Matthew 11, you will see him say next in 29, Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. Because I'm humble and gentle at heart. And you'll find rest for your souls. You know, when I read this verse, I asked myself, first of all, the Lord is saying that he wants to remove a yoke from my neck and then put another yoke on me. Mm -hmm. huh? His own yoke. And I'm like, ah. Well, I thought he said you're going to remove the burden from me. And see what he says next. For my yoke is easy to bear. And the burden I give you, yes, it's a burden, but it's a light burden. If you have burden that is heavier than the one you had in the world, it didn't come from the Lord. It came from the wrong person you were drawn to. Satan. And you know what the Lord told me? He said, let me remind you that my yoke is stronger, but it is lighter. Your face changed. How do you know? John 10. <coughs> Open your Bibles with me to John chapter 10. And I'll read to you. I need to find it now. How Jesus describes his hold on those who are yoked to him. Verse 27. My sheep. Verse 27, John 10. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. And they will never perish. That fear of perishing is because you are not yoked with the Lord. Mm. That fear of, of hell that is still in your heart, after you claim you have believed, it didn't come from the Lord. It came because you never came to the Lord. If you came to the Lord and His righteousness becomes your righteousness and His life becomes your life and the holiness of Christ overshadows you, 
the fear of hell is removed because sin is the father of fear. When sin is present, fear enters the sin. The sin, praise the Lord. When sin is present, fear enters the sin. Uh -uh. Like a rhyme, interesting. When sin is present, songwriters, these are, the, these are the way you can get lines for your songs. Yes. Oh, I remember the song. Light is a portal and in it comes life. Fear is the first thing that comes from the dark. Through that dark, yes. Darkness, the first thing that comes with darkness is fear. He says, they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. For my father has given them to me. And he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from my father's hand. And the father and I are one. So the yoke of Christ is a stronger yoke. This isn't falling away that you experience. It's, not because, it's because you're not joined to Christ. If you're joined to Christ, you won't fall away that easily. Because he holds you stronger than the world held you. In fact, I can tell you, it is easier to leave the world than to leave Christ. Yes, yes. Stop believing all those lies you heard. Yes. Somebody, yes now, it is harder to backslide than to leave the world to Christ. You know why? Because the person that holds you stronger. is stronger. Yes. And that's why I told you that his yoke is stronger, but it is lighter. He's holding you and he's not gagging you. He's holding you and he's not gagging you. Because if it was that easy to for people like us who would have been, would have been out, crashed out, what kind of rubbish we were doing at some point. It's, it, it's like, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, there's this material that is lighter and stronger. It's not carbon fiber. <laughs> carbon fiber is stronger, gets lighter. lighter and you never will understand that combination, but now I get it. The Lord is hold over you, he's stronger, yet he doesn't choke you with demands. Praise the Lord. And, and, and why must you come to Christ? Why? Why must you come to Christ for rest? Rest is what we're talking about tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. John 8, 31. John 8, 31. See what Christ said. Jesus said to the people who believed him, not to the people that don't believe him now. I'm not speaking to everybody. Praise God. Yeah. To the people who did what? Believe. Who believed him. You are truly my disciples if you do what? If you remain faithful to my teachings. Go on, the next verse. And you will know the truth. And the truth will what? You set you free. If you went to anybody other than Christ, or you are a disciple of anyone other than Christ, or you abide by the teachings of any other, other than Christ, you will never know freedom. It's not a curse. It's the reality. There is freedom in no other. And that's why I'm warning many of you who make men of God bigger than Christ in your life. The bondage that you will enter into is not being written. You know why it's not being written? Because when we were in the world, when we were in the world, they knew unto whom who, they knew who was holding their 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 freedom. Mm -hmm. They knew who was holding them hostage. But many of you don't even know who is now. Mm. And, and that's why I'm saying that your freedom, your, your slavery has not been written. Because you don't know who is holding you. Because you left the world and started following a man instead of Christ. Or you left the world and committed yourself to a, a system. Instead of Christ. Yeah. And I'm telling you that you have to draw the line between following men or systems or organizations and following Christ. You must draw the line. If you don't draw that line and know for sure 
who you are following, there is no freedom for you. Defeat. Constant defeat. You will be weary. You will be burdened. You will be wondering what happened to you. Then you know what happens. You will now begin to become offended. You will now see people who are genuinely making progress. You need to mock them. <laughs> because what, what did not happen to you, you don't think can happen to others. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yes. Go on. Let's, let's read on. The next verse. Go on. But we are descendants of Abraham. Can you see old talking? This is old. But, 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 but we, are, we are disciples of the archbishop now. That's old talking. Do you understand what I'm saying? Trying to defend why they, why they are entitled to freedom. You're making your ties to somebody else other than Christ. So this is old talking. They said, we have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean you will be set free? They didn't even realize again that they were in slaves. <laughs> That's, they don't even know that they were in slavery. And he's putting it to them that you are in slavery. And he's not speaking to unbelievers here. I hope you know. He was speaking to those who believed in him. Those who believed in him are still claiming that they are not, they are not, they are not slaves. Do you, do, you, do you understand what's going on? You know, I established that fact that he, spoke, he was speaking to what? Yeah. Those who believed in him. Yeah. And they are claiming now that they are not under any bondage. You see the problem? And so, Jesus and so, Abraham. Abraham. Christ said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. They're talking about you being zenith of Abraham. When you get to heaven, Abraham will slap you if you ever get to heaven. And you. I do this in the morning. I do this in the morning. No, you know that you're bad. Why are you saying now? You're a disgraceful child. After all, I taught you. You want to spoil my bread? Where I am here? Eh? But it's not possible because I was that was a joke. Like, eh, Zinji, Marco Bavio. It says. And Christ now persisted again. He says, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. Go on. And that's an analogy. A slave is not a permanent member of the family. He can identify with the family. He can, he, he can be found at the gates of the house of the family. He is seen everywhere with them. When they go to the market, he follows them. When they go everywhere... But he is not part of the family. You know why? Because he chooses to believe the opinion of other persons. Other than the owner of the house. And the slave can become his son. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, like this guy's uh, servant. Abraham. Yes, sir. Yes. That guy is not different from his Elijah's son. Uh, Abraham's son. Elijah, Elijah was Elijah's servant. We gave him everything. Yeah. How much more can his son be than that? Mm. Eh? How much more can his son be than that? Eh? How many sons even get their father's, their father's anointing? In fact, if he gave your, gave your child money and gave your servant anointing, the servant is better than your son. Yeah. And his son gets to know that that way he gives servant. He will curse his father. Because you soon realize that money is nonsense. Praise the Lord. But the son is a but a son is part of the family forever. And what he's doing is he's calling them to be what? To be sons. But they were so cool with the slavery that they were under. The next verse. So if who? The son. No, go to, go to the verse before. So you know that there are two different sons there. Someone that are S. Do you understand? A son. But now, this, this a son means that these are the people that will become children of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? But there is the son, and Hebrews describes that. There is a firstborn. So, there is the son, whom true every other son is born. So, go to the next verse. 
But when the sun sets you free, you are what? So that means there is false freedom. Some are claiming to set you free. And you are not really free. They are giving you points. Nuggets. That is how to be free. And you never have become free. The sun does not give you nuggets. It sets you free. It sets you free. And you got to stay in the freedom. Where we in Christ. That's our scripture. Yes. What verse is that? What verse is that? Can we find it together? What verse is that? Five one. What does it say? Stand. Ah, I don't like stand fast. Yes. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you what? Stay free because some people have made it their life ambition to drag you back into slavery. So no, 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 look at this. Look at this verse. Look at this verse. Such clarity. Some of us, when we first believed, came into freedom. And then, slowly and gradually, we started to dance along with slave. No, okay. It's like this. We just like, <laughs> just slip back into slavery again. I know what the funny part. This slavery is now slavery 2.0 because it's not like the first one you're coming from. That one is clear slavery. This kind of slavery is covert. You don't even know you are in slavery. 2.0. You don't even know. They'll be telling you, oh, guy, you're in bondage. Mm, mm, I'm free. Fucking ledger. Like, the dance shower is there. Fucking ledger. Fucking ledger. Yeah, oh, guy. So, Paul is saying that. Though you have been set free, there's a chance that you can slide back into slavery. Go to go to Hebrews chapter four, uh, chapter chapter four, verse one. See how he says it there. See how the writer of Hebrews says it. No, no, three verse one, three, three, three verse one. See how he says it. He says so. Uh, no, no, no. Go to two, two verse one. Let's be just short. Two verse one. I know it's just a, it's a verse one, and the early. Listen, so what he says, so we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard. Or we may do what? Drift. You know, I told you that I said drifting is not just moving. It's just time. Just be doing moonwalk. And then out of the frame of the camera radio. Nobody see me. And I'm just going like that. Ah, my God. I want you to pray wherever you are. I want you to pray wherever you are. I refuse to enter into slavery again. The freedom the Son has given to me is f- freedom. Everything that you take, we will do. Even if it means starting from scratch again. Even if it means coming out to give our life to Christ again. We must escape slavery. This covert slavery that has got people up. This slavery to religion and routine and the ideas of men. You need to pray this prayer. These are the kind of prayers that you need to pray. Because if you don't get out, your children are going to be second generation covert slave. And they will not even know that you, they have slid into the slavery that you slid into after being set free by Christ. Lord, even not for my sake, for my children's sake, I refuse to hand over to them covert slavery in the name of Jesus. I refuse to hand over to them covert slavery. Never. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are prayed. You know, some of us need to start thinking apart from ourselves. And abandoning our own interests. And thinking about our children. Some of us need to start thinking about our children. And saying, excuse me sir, I'm not living because of myself. But I don't want my children to experience this. I can still manage because I understand how we got here. But we must understand how we got here. We didn't know how we got here. I'm not going to apologize to them. Listen to me, guys. I did not live the pleasure of, of, of the world living in Islam to enter into Christianity to come and start apologizing. God forbid, in Jesus' name. No. I don't care what, what I have to do. 
If I catch a wind and one body is drifting away, we'll shut it down. Yes. JK, are you not ready? Yes. Not ready? Is that what we discussed at the beginning? We'll shut it down. We're not in the ministry that does not, that does not close up. Oh. All these funny ministry that was that forever. I want to show us. We can lock up shop. Go and ask about us. We've changed location how many times already. We can shut it down and move somewhere else. Sure, we are not attached to anything. And not attached to us. We are weightless. Praise the Lord. Amen. The only thing that matters is that we are following the Lord. And we are nomads. We don't build houses. Yes. Let me be clear. The anointed one. Who's the anointed one? Jesus. Yes. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Not partially. You know that partially part? Some areas we are free, some areas are not free. Some, uh, some areas, they will not be saying, some areas, you know, this one, just leave it. That, that, that's how it's going to be. No! Everything, you replace it completely. And he did not upgrade it. Mm. It's not update. It's, not it's, it's replace. They gave me a new life. Why must I be tied down by things that will tie me down when I had an old life? God forbid in Jesus' name. It says we must always cherish this truth. We must always cherish this truth. And stubbornly refuse to go back. And stubbornly refuse to go back, back. on the your past. And that thing has been carried. Yeah. See, let me tell you one thing. Yeah. If you've ever seen anybody that soldier wants to arrest, <laughs> and the way they behave, if you don't arrest you, you say, let's go, let's go, let's go. You don't even know where they're carrying you, so that's the problem. You know, at least when they're going to the next police station, around, and people can find you. When they, at least when they call, 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 they will know where you are. But since they want to carry you away, you'll be sitting there, eh, eh, anyhow, anyhow. Just don't carry me away from here. Because they will not lock you up, and they will not tell anybody where you are. Violently. When I see some people around me, people that I've known in the past, one way back, and I see the way they are tied up in complaining. I see the way they are tied up in murmuring. I see the way they are tied up in complaining in all kinds of things. I feel sad for them. And I tell them, you don't have to live like this. If I go and bear my workplace, I know because they are giving salary here. Just know what I'm saying. If I, if I, if I, if I have to bear my marriage, God forbid. I know that I'm, I, I'm, I'm uh, verbally covenanted to the person. I'm not going to bear my face. Because the fundamental value, fact of my faith is rest. Rest. That's what he promised. That's what he promised me. Fundamentally. Rest. I don't have that rest. Is either something is wrong with where I am. Or something wrong with me, but never with the person that promised it. Amen. And so my job is to say, you know what? If there is rest out there, I don't want to rest in it. I'm not sure you are desperate enough about rest. How many of you have ever been caught up in the office and you have worked for two years, no leave? You know the kind of hysteria that used to happen to you, the way you begin to behave. Everything touches, everything makes you. They know that they have, they have pushed you to the corner, but they refuse to give you the leave. So you two, any small thing, leave me alone, huh? what is it? They know what's really going on, but not everybody don't know what's going on. You know what some people will just do? You just stop coming to work. You sack me or you sack me, I'm going to take my leave. It's my leave. Praise the Lord. Whatever it will take, whatever it will take, I will find freedom. And I found it. And that's why he's saying that you must what? You must stop bonding. Make sure that you don't let go of what you received. If you do. If you do. Huh. May God forbid in Jesus' name. Amen. Nobody in one body. Whether you are in one body church or you are in fight with one body vision, you will never be caught up in, in slavery in Jesus' name. We don't only pray. We will not only pray. We will drag you in Jesus' name. The problem isn't that there is no freedom in Christ. Hebrews 4.1, you know what he says? 
It says the freedom. Remember, read it last week now. The freedom that what? No, see now. God's promise of what? Entering his rest. Still does what? Stands. The problem is not the rest not being available. The problem is that those who the rest was promised for cannot die to themselves. That's the problem. Many church folks we really need to give their lives to Christ. Because what they gave their life to was the promise of a better life. What they give their lives to. And the promise of a better life is not rest. Just relocate. Just relocate. Better life. Am I lying? If you want better life, just relocate. You can save up after a while. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or go and pass through the maintenance and see. Like some people are doing, but God forbid. Eh? Even some African countries, some African countries, is, is, they have constant light. <laughs> if that's what people would define as rest. So, our neighbor here is us. Are you understand what I'm saying? If better life is what you're looking for, it's not Christ you're looking for. You can get better life in this life. But if you're looking for rest, eternal rest, that starts from here, that a man has, even though his account is empty, and he's not desperate, what is called contentment? Praise the Lord. Do you know what I'm saying? Even though ambitious, but content. His ambitious, yet he's content. I don't know how that's possible, but in Christ it is. You are ambitious, yet you are content. Greed does not have a hold of your heart. That's rest. It's ironical. Praise the Lord. And listen to me. Listen to me, guys. I am deliberate when I try to differentiate all scripture from the teachings of Christ. Mm. I said it before, I'm saying it again. What's the time now? 5 31. 31. This is the result of. This is the result of. This is the result of, of refusing to buy battery into your wristwatch. That's why I keep asking you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just to step on the road, I just ask somebody to change it to. No, I want to carry it to service center. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, on the road, it's, it's, it's cheap. Eh? <laughs> Praise God. Open your Bibles with me to Hebrews 2 36. <laughs> Hebrews 2 36. Open it. I'm not talking about all scripture. I'm talking about the teachings of Christ. You know what he said? He said to us in John 8. He said, if you, what? Follow my word. My, not the teachings of some other person. Even though it's written in scripture. My teaching. So what makes us think that we can escape if we ignore this great salvation that was first what? Announced by the Lord Jesus himself and delivered to us by those who did what? Not who heard about it somewhere. And so what we are doing is we are passing on and this verse is a direct reference to Matthew 28 verse 20. This verse is a direct reference to Matthew 28 verse 20. What does it say in verse 20? The A part. What does it say there? It says, teach these new disciples to obey the commands that who gave you. It's not all the commands in, in the Bible. That's not what it says. My commands, the word I gave you. So the guy that Nebu is saying the words that the Lord just said and was communicated by those who heard him speak. Who were those who heard him speak? Matthew, John, just what I'm saying, Peter. Who were there? Nobody said they, they told us in the vision. Praise the Lord. Direct from source. How they try to because if you are passing message across, yes, there's a possibility that it could be distorted. Mm. But the level of distortion in their own is very minimal. Even if it's distorted, it's that nothing compared it to very, very all the other. And that's why we must continue to remind ourselves of these things. Why freedom? 
Because when a man gets free, he has to stay free. Don't forget. When a man gets free, he has to do what? Stay free. We went from being enslaved by white people physically with ropes on our necks and chains on our legs to not being enslaved again economically. Where we cannot produce anything. They give us global trade, foreign trade. Yes, we produce nothing. Foreign trade always ends up on their own side because they dump stuff in our markets. Yeah. And we are slaves to them. We, 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 we transact business with their currency. I went back in slavery. They gave us freedom and took it back. Yeah. The ones that give freedom, or the ones that say they give freedom in the world, is not really freedom. Praise the Lord. Are we together, guys? Yes, sir. What's the time? Ah, okay, I already take the time. When it is um, 45. 5 for, uh, um, 5.45. Yes. Yes, 5.45. Please let me know. Um, Matthew 12. I want to show you an example of what coming to Christ means versus staying in the old. Matthew 12. We start from verse 1. I'm not going to read the entire thing because I don't want to um, say too many things yet. Verse 1. Ah, okay. Sorry, Matthew 18. Matthew 12. At about that time, Jesus was walking through some grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, so they began breaking off some heads of grain and eating them. But some of the Pharisees saw them do it and protested. Look, your disciples are breaking the law by harvesting grain on Sabbath. The disciples are breaking the law by doing what? Harvesting grain on Sabbath. Now let me ask you a simple question. Were they lying against them? No, they were not. Because what they were doing by taking food directly from the farm is harvesting. Whether they put, take one and put it in their mouth, or they use cutlass, or the most important thing is that they were harvesting and putting it in their mouth. They were harvesting. And that is the violation of the ritual of the day of rest. Praise the Lord. Now, Jesus responded to them in two. And this will continue. I can't, I can't finish these thoughts today. Hmm? What? You don't want to finish everything today? So say, you wait, say you wait till nine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are here. You can't even last that long. Praise the Lord. He <laughs> says, speak for yourself. Praise the Lord. So, he responded to that accusation with two things. Mm -hmm. So let's read on. Verse 3. He said to them, Haven't you read the scriptures? And that's why you must have knowledge of the old. So that when old come, you can show them the foolishness in their words. Do you understand what I'm saying? Haven't you read in scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God and he and his companions broke the law. Can you see how I said it? Broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread and only the priests, that only the priests are allowed to eat. And haven't you read in the law of Moses that the priests on duty in the temple may walk on Sabbath? I tell you, there is one here who is even greater than the temple. Hallelujah. Not just David, not, not just priests, so, but the entire system. system that revolves around the temple. One is here. Who is what? And that's how you must be thinking about who you are, who you came to. The person you came to cannot be put under the law. So when they tell you that you are cursed and you are in Christ and you believe it, you are foolish. Because laws, are, uh, courses are based on law. Just what I'm saying. Courses are based on the law. Are you, are you getting my point? 
and the person you came to, you know, it's my point. Courses are based on law. The validity of a course is when the man has broken the law. That's, that's why the Bible says that a go a while I need it. That's the Yoruba version. A course does not, uh, what's it called, without a cause. So it must be tied to something that is, is uh, propagated by the law. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. But in Christ, he is sitting above the application of the law. And so when he says, I set you free, he's not dragging you to the court to go and get Abidavid to release you. You know, he is able to say, Oh, he, he has broken the law, Abi. You know what? He's with me. Leave him. Because the person that will judge the case is the one that is talking in the first place. And the power of the law rests on the power of God to if exercise consequences. If there are no consequences, the law is useless. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. It's useless now. Yes, yes. And that's what's happening in Nigeria. Our law is becoming valid against corruption because those who are supposed to prosecute it are powerless. They're not corrupt. They are powerless. The prison system is powerless. The judging, the judicial system is just there. The policing system is there. So people can do anything and get away with it. The law has become weak. Without those who enforce the law, the law is what? Do you know what I'm saying? So the person that they will bring the case to in the first place is the one that said, he's with me. Leave him alone. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, that's, why it is, that's why when they say you are under a curse, I'm like, what, which curse again? Can a man be in Christ and be cursed? Jesus do you know what I'm saying? He can go to jail, but he's not cursed. So, do you, so again, when you relate it to oaths, for example, oaths, one of the Bible says that if a woman makes an oath somewhere and she gets home and her father hears about the oath or her husband and says, No, I don't agree with this, he can cancel yes. her commitment. Yes. You know why? Because he is the authority over her. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do, do you get that analogy? So, when God is not saying, I swear, if God says, I swear, he has to swear by something for it to be valid. That's why people swear by the temple. They swear by, they will say, swear by the Lord. That's what they will say. But now the Lord himself is saying something. There is nobody higher than him. To, the whole idea of higher than him is the person that will bring him to judgment if he fails on his word. That's what he means. Are you, are you getting the point? Yes. So when there's no higher than him, who will bring him to... And yet he still fulfills his promise. Yeah. Even though there's nobody to bring him to, mm -hmm. to account if he doesn't. Do you get the point? Yes. So who can bring Christ to come and answer for something? How can they bring you? But those who don't know, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be playing money to people. who will be helping them to break courses that don't exist in the first place. Yeah, it's a subscription. You have to keep paying. <laughs> In fact, let me give you one more reason. Uh, okay, that story I want to start. I'll continue on Wednesday by the grace of God. But well, let me give you one more reason why you should know. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4. I, I'm not sure. Some of us know who we came to and the capacity he has to f set us free. This shows that the Son is what? Far greater than the angels. Not greater. Far, far greater. Some people say he's superior to the angels. Just as the name God gave him is greater than the names of angels. So there's power in the name of angels. Praise God. But the power that their names carry is inferior compared to the power that is in the name of Jesus. So that's how you know that people that are in select, they are grossly in error. You say Jesus Christi. Michael Limimo, they say it before they pray. They are grossly in error. When you say Jesus, you don't say Michael again. Even Michael will slap you. you say, ah! Ah! 
a commis voilà. Because when you have mentioned the name of Jesus, it's not it's under nothing. It's under nothing. It's above all. Let's go on, let's go on, let's go on. God never said to any angel what he said to Jesus. He says, You are my son. Not son like that. Son, like that like that son. My only son. Today, I have become your father. God also said, I will be his father and he will be my son. Verse 6. I want to show you. And when he brought his firstborn son into the world, like as a human, God said, let all the God's angels worship him as a baby in the world. Yeah? It's 45. Let's just read it off. Let's read it off. I'm not preaching any further. So, verse 7. Let's go. Verse 7. Regarding the angels, he says, he sends his angels like winds, his servants like flames of fire. Somebody told me that this is his ministers, that, and he's talking about pastors and whatever. How people just take sutures and just destroy it, and you, and you all sit down there and open your mouth and agree with it. Ah. We need to be using cane now, to be chasing it off the stage. But to the son, he says, Your throne. Oh God, endures forever and ever. Your rule with a scepter of justice. You rule with a scepter of justice. Go on, go to verse 9. Go on. You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, oh God, your God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you. More than who? So even if there is joy somewhere, the joy that the son gives far outweighs any joy anybody can give. Go on, go on. I want to, I want to finish that chapter. It's, it's almost there. He also says to the son, In the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. Go on, go on. They will perish, but you will remain forever. They will wear out like old clothing. You will fold them like a cloak and discard them like old clothing. But you are always the same. You will live forever. This is the same book that talks about Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. Abby? Go on, go on. I think that's where we're going to. And God never said to any of the angels, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a full stool under your feet. He says so to any angel. All of these things God was saying to Jesus as equivalent of God. And he's saying it. He was saying it at the time when Christ had not been revealed to men. Finish that chapter. Therefore, after having said all these things, angels are only seven spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. So for you to worship angels, angels are sent to you and you still worship. For you to worship angels. So when I am in a meeting, a minister now begins to do drama. I was in one meeting like that when I was in court. One popular minister that all of you know came to the meeting. Started talking for a long time. He's saying a lot of things that I like. And he started saying things that I did not like. <laughs> right now, everybody calm down. There's an angel in this room. One is standing there. One is standing over there right now. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Uh, they are here. They are here. They are sent to begin to minister to you. Uh, so I said, my own question was simple. So all that we've been there before. When the Lord was with us, they did not, they did not minister. It's when he now saw them. And when he said that, everyone said, You're not praying to the Lord. You're praying to the angels that they thought is, that they thought is there. Scammer. That's what he is. A bad scammer. In the words of Pastor Henry, he has given us handicap. He has carried us into handicaps. <laughs> I don't need to see an angel to be attended to. <laughs> do I believe that they are sent? Listen, do I believe that they are sent to minister to us? Yes, yes I do. Yes. But do I pray to them and ask them for help? They were sent. Sent. That's the key word. Sent. sent. Mm. So I'm not, I don't look to them for help. I look to the one who I went to. He will not dispatch them. Even, even Daniel did not look to angels. Mm -hmm. They were sent to him still. Praise the Lord. 
Don't believe everything you see because you have followership on social media. I will continue on Wednesday. Because that story I want to share, ah, that's why it's thick. It's just not in the Bible, resting. And I found it. It's a thick story. That small scenario that was about to unfold. I want you to pray. In fact, I want all of us, uh, not only you, me too, I will pray. I want us to pray. I want us to pray, not I want you to pray. I want us all to pray. And the prayer is simple. I stay in the freedom that Christ has given to me. Yes. And let's, let me now find this caveat. I'm not unaware that some people are listening to me right now and you're not free. You are forming free, but you know in your heart of hearts that you're not free. But let's pray for them, first of all. Let's pray for everyone who is not free. Let's pray, Lord, as they have heard your word, cause their hearts to believe. Because if they don't believe, they can't be free. Pray for them. Pray for them. There are people you know who obviously are caught up in bondage again and they believe in the Lord. But they have allowed themselves through the things that they have been listening to over the years to be, sl- to be, to be tied down back into slavery. Pray that the Lord will bring them out of that, of that slavery. Pray for them wherever they are in the name of Jesus. Are they your siblings? Are they your friends? Are they your pastors? Pray for them. Some pastors have, have, been, have slipped back into slavery. And they are leading people in that hundreds back into slavery. Because they, have been, because they have been lied to. Why don't you pray for them? Say, Lord, please cause them to experience a spiritual deliverance. Through obedience. Let their heart obey again. Let their heart choose obedience above sentiments again. Let them be willing to die. To themselves, they're willing to lose their friendships and their associations. Many people, that's the reason why they cannot afford to lose their friendships, their associations, their businesses are tied to, to the lies. And they know that they are they lie, but over time, they soon, before you know it, they now become no, no difference again. They become so used to it that they now became part of it. I want you to pray for them because they are, they are, they are, they are setting themselves up for regrets. And Christ is not a lie. I want you to pray for them. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. I want you to pray for yourself right now. And as I pray for myself too. Lord, I will do everything possible to stay in this freedom. So help me, God. Pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, help me. Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Everything it will take to stay in this freedom. Everything it will take. Everything it will take. The, the decisions that I need to make. Some of you might need to break away from some stations that, that you like so much. I stay in this freedom. I rather part ways with my friends than lose my freedom. I rather part ways with my friends than lose my freedom. I refuse to lose this freedom. It has cost you so much to grant it unto me. And I'm not going to walk away from it. No matter what it takes. No matter the pressure in my environment. I want you to pray and speak to God right now, wherever you are. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. I pray for myself right now. I pray for myself right now. Lord, help me. I refuse to be dragged back into slavery. Rest is what you promised me. And rest I shall have. Rest is what you promised me. This uneasiness, this anxiety, does not come from Christ. Worry is the opposite of rest. And it does not come from Christ. It comes from the devil. It comes from mammon. Worry comes from mammon. Lord, I refuse to be sent back into the place of worry that I used to be. Back when I, I did not believe. Lord, I refuse to be sent back into the place of worry when I believed and I was led away into lies. Now, my freedom has been redefined. It has been redeclared and I believe it. And I refuse to go back to where I was coming from in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Wherever you are, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. And as your heart believes these words, as your heart believes these words, your freedoms have become evident in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will empower you to make the decisions you need to make to be truly free in Jesus' name. Amen. Andrew saw the Lord and realized that everything else is not freedom and he left all. Matthew had financial freedom, but when he saw the Lord, he realized that he wasn't truly free. Lord, everything that is saying itself as freedom to us 
contrary to your will. Today, our eyes are opened in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Everyone standing as a face of Christ and blocking our view from Christ. Today, we refuse to associate with them anymore in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We choose Christ alone. Yeah. We choose Christ forever. Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. 